Good evening once again. We are starting with me right here on uh, the Marty Heiser Show. We're so glad you're here. We have an incredible show tonight. Incredible. We have political luminaries here. We have a rogues galleries as far left as, uh, well, Stalin, really, and as far right as Attila the Hun, and everywhere in between, because that's what you get from the Marty Heiser Show. Now, if you look out your window right now, it's cold, it's wet, it's rainy. What are you going to do? Stay right here, watch the whole show. I promise you, you will be entertained. The first item up is uh, the issue of the national debt. And, uh, and what we want to talk about first is this video that I have seen on uh, YouTube. Now, this is going to take a minute. You might not know this, but this is actually uh, um, a uh, nonprofit uh, um, political show. So here we go. And let's see if this will actually start at which time we will... Uh, just move it ahead. It's doing this little buffering thing. I can tell you what it's about. It's basically about this guy who's going in to get a mortgage. Here we go. If we can go right to the videotape. Okay, and now it's not going. <laughs> My debt limit? Excuse me? My debt limit. I'd like to raise it. Because the last time I checked, Mr. Smith, you were in serious debt. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Figured we should raise that limit. Yeah, it says here you're $140,270 in debt. Yeah, this is the part where our technical staff hasn't really worked it. And, and it's a time of buffering where you get to know the characters and it should begin. There we go. So I figured we should raise that limit to about 170000 I just bought a 60-inch flat screen. Have you ever been to Australia? No. Leaving tomorrow, mate. You should check it out. Great parasailing. Do you have some new income that I don't know about? Uh, no, still making about twenty one grand a year. Okay, and are you still spending $38,000 a year? If that's what it says. So you're adding $17,000 a year in debt. Oh, is that what it comes out to? Debt limit going up. Ding! Uh, have you made any cuts in your expenses? Oh, of course, yes. Uh, my wife and I cut $380 out of our annual budget. It's $380. It's brutal. <laughs> So you're, you're, you're making, you're adding, okay, so you're adding $17,000 a year to your $140,000 in debt, and you cut $380. Why well, you say it like that, it makes it not sound like a lot. Hey, maybe you should think about generating some new income, maybe a new job, maybe ask for that raise. Oh, asking for that raise, that's not, I'm not comfortable, that's an awkward conversation. I, I I've always been able to raise my debt limit. Yeah, well, th this is a little different. Well, how? We're in the middle of a recession, and your credit rating will plummet if you continue to go along this path. It I almost had it. Um, you, you don't see how bad this is, do you? I cut my budget by $380. Are you kidding? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. We can't help you. You're just a little like it. I am. I'm very sorry. My wife is lose this it. is the good part. I mean, $380 is bad enough. I mean, this is going to end our marriage. We stopped talking to each other for a month. The baby was totally freaked out. Wait. You have kids? Yeah. Yeah. Sign there. All right. Our kid's a blessing. <laughs> I mean, she's got plenty of time to deal with all this, right? Absolutely. Are we all set? You're all set. All right. Let's go, kiddo. We got to meet Mommy at the car store. Here we go. I think this is yours. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks. Hey! Well, there you have it. That's the video of, uh, it's kind of making the rounds on YouTube. It's a popular video, and basically it captures what we're dealing with on the federal level. Here is another good uh, a political cartoon that captures the same thing. We're going to put that up as well. But basically we're in trouble. We're in trouble on a federal level with the debt. Uh, if you can read that, it says national debt 
and then it says slavery and you see right over here there's the national debt and right over here we are basically locking our kids into a life of slavery and you begin to notice it already with recent college graduates that are not able to find jobs in this economy. The debt, the national debt, the state debt that's burdening the economy is unable to produce jobs and it's because we're spending, spending, spending. Now a lot of times what we talk about on this show is the difference between conservative and liberal, the difference between Republicans and Democrats. And let me just put it to you as clearly as I can. If you're a Republican and you see this problem, you say we, you say we need to spend less. If you're a Democrat, and you see this same problem with uh, um, that's going on, you answer with, we need to tax more. Which brings me to Mr. Uh, President Barack Obama's State of the Union address last night, mm -hmm. which essentially said the only problem, it's not that he spent as much money as all the other presidents combined from, from uh, Washington through Bush. That's not the problem. We don't have a spending problem. We're just not taxing the fat cats enough. Yeah. And if we can only raise taxes on the millionaire and billionaires, and oh, by the way, those of you trying to sell a house in Fairfield County uh, anytime recently, you will notice that there are a lot fewer millionaires out there, let alone billionaires, unless you count the ones that are running for president on the Republican Party. But that's a whole other story. But the fact of the matter is that we don't have a taxing problem. We have a spending problem, which brings me to the Connecticut legislature up there in Hartford just this past week. Moody's has downgraded uh, Connecticut bond rating. We went from a double A two, which is no great shakes. You should really have a triple A bond rating, but it went from a double A two down to a double A three. And they, they uh, said that basically they're unable uh, to with, withstand the state spending that's going on in Hartford right now, where we are controlled by a Democratic state Senate group, a Democratic-controlled legislature, as my uh, first guest will attest to. And of course, we have Governor Malloy, who is controlling the purse strings as well, and making sure that the public unions get their fat cat to coin a phrase, uh, um, uh, contracting increases at the state level. So that's what you have. I mean, it's a depressing time. The economy isn't coming around. We just had the housing reports come in from last year. Oh, I would say uh, maybe the president thinks things are getting better, but it was the worst housing report since 1967. Since 1967. That's when, like, your dad was out driving really ugly cars. 1967. Can you imagine? Worst housing report since then. There is a glimmer of hope. The Navy SEALs, those, those wonderful modern-day warriors, went out. There was this lovely lady who went to a Christian school outside of Philadelphia. And what did she want to do with her life? She wanted to go to an impoverished area of Africa and try to help these people demine. They've had so many civil wars and battles going on that mines have just been strewed all around. I remember Lady Di did this as well. Or she was supportive of these kind of groups. They went out there. And what happened to her? She got, uh, she got captured along with another Danish um, uh, um, non-profit worker that was working in the same thing. They monitored them, and who did they send in? The same SEAL Team 6. It's called the Development Group. SEAL Team 6, which combines other forces, not just Navy SEALs, but they went in there, they parachuted down, they assaulted the thing, took out all the terrorists, and freed the hostage. I mean, it's something like out of a movie. This was the same team that went in and got Osama bin Laden a couple, uh, couple months ago, I guess back in May in Pakistan. So. Navy SEALs, I salute you. We've had you on the team, uh, uh, Captain Bissett uh, uh, and Commander Jay, all you guys out there, we salute you. We're glad you're on our team, and thank you so much for what you do. Anyways, that's just a little rant on my part. I thought that that video was pretty good. Um, it kind of captures on a, on a personal budgetary level what we're up against on the federal level. We've spent too much money. we got to stop mm. spending this money, and we don't need to raise taxes. That's not the answer. That's just my point of view, and this is the Marty Heiser Show, where some have said you always get the truth. <sighs> Thank you for letting me vent like that. You're on a roll. It's good. It just takes <laughs> it off my chest, and, and I go. <laughs> Representative Dan Carter, thank you so much for joining us from the 2nd District here mm -hmm. in Connecticut. 
I really appreciate I really appreciate you coming in. We want to talk really quickly about the bond rating, about redistricting, about the session coming up starting on uh, on February 8th, as well as the Connecticut election landscape. Who do you like? You like this guy, Shays? <laughs> Who do you like? And joining us, we have uh, Professor Jim Bolano from Westcon, a political science yep. professor. Thank you Welcome. so much Thank for you. that. Yeah. And we have uh, Dave Strait. A, uh, um, I mean, what more can you say about Dave Strait? It's an incredibly successful financial um, consultant, as well as quite the deer hunter. And uh, you have that. And Larry Ditkoff. Without the, you, Without the pink tie. Without the pink tie. How'd they not, let him out here? Not having overslept, he is here. <laughs> I'm here. He has a bit of a cult fo following. And remember that spectrum I was talking about? Here yeah, it is. Uh, here it is. All the way. Well, I know he's not Attila. <laughs> he's not Attila. Well, who no. is Attila? Wait, does that make me Attila? <laughs> I don't know. Attila, yeah. no, Attila the Hunt is a conservative guy that just kind of took over everything. Yeah. Stalin, of course, was, you know, the guy that the Germans truck. No, that was Lenin. The Germans uh, uh, piped in when there was bread riots in Moscow. But, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what's okay. going on. You, someone who would know because you're in the state, in the legislature, is it wrong of me to characterize the downgrading of the Connecticut state debt as a problem with too much spending? What do you think? No, I, I think that's totally where where it came from. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting when you argue with somebody who um, who can't stand on an argument. Right. What do they do? They lie, deny, and counter accuse. Well, All that's right. exactly what the uh, the governor's administration has been doing. Okay. Because you know Ben Barnes, uh, they came out and and viciously attacked Moody's for downgrading their I credit. Saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was their thing. Right, and, yeah, right, right, right exactly. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because I mean, you got to ask yourself: Would you loan Connecticut money? Yeah. You know, when you're when we're the, one of the worst sinkhole states, we have the, the largest unfunded pension obligations out there mm -hmm. that's that's real debt yeah. not to mention the fact that we've overspent and and the the single worst uh, thing that I think people aren't looking at is the fact that the uh, the governor when we negotiated these agreements with mm -hmm. the unions you know, he basically and, and I was criticized for saying give away the farm but mm -hmm. that's what he did it was a terrible negotiation the unions got four years with no layoffs and the problem is with with any business or any mm -hmm. large organization labor being one of your key you know elements to trying to save mm -hmm. we can't touch that now so the problem is what do you do then so there's only a couple things you do. You make massive cuts, which now he's claiming he's going to make cuts, which I don't know why we didn't do that before, or you raise taxes. Well, the, the idea with uh, Governor Malloy being elected was that he could control the unions, that he was the guy. He's going to be able to come up with this great contract. You're telling me they have a four-year no-layoff contract in the middle of one of the worst recessions since uh, the Great Depression? Yes. And by the way, if you want to have a question for uh, Dan Carter or anyone here, the phone number here is 438-2003. Please, feel free. You go right on the air. This is uh, um, uh, freedom of speech at its best. So don't <laughs> hesitate to call in. If he's saying anything wrong, if you disagree with me or disagree with Larry, call in. Fair but enough. is that, I mean, that doesn't seem like he's delivered on that. And, and it was, I believe, the public unions that really were behind his campaign and donation and workers and everything that put him in office. Well, I mean, listen, it, d it depends how you want to look at this thing. I mean, my, my personal opinion is um, he's done everything to help the unions. I think most of what we saw with all the bantering back and forth, I'm not accepting the agreement. I think most of that was orchestrated for that matter because the unions came out of this I think really really well in the long run in fact I've heard rumors of people who are in those unions saying look what a great deal we got mm -hmm. you know the bottom line is we needed a long-term vision to reduce the size of state government none of that happened we didn't reduce the size of the budget we went from 18 billion to 20 billion mm -hmm. although a few of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have recently you know been kind enough to remind me that no we really did cut the budget because we cut the amount of increase yeah. Literally, I, I had somebody say that the other day. Um, it wasn't that long ago here we borrowed money again for the operating expenses. Mm -hmm. So we're really in a bind. We're about a million dollars away from the constitutional spending cap. Uh, you're going to see two things in this next session, which is a good segue. You're going to see the governor and the administration try to cut anything they can. Um, and most of those are going to be things we don't want to cut. For instance, they just announced that they're going to cut the tombstone program for veterans. Okay. So they're going to take money out of that. One of the few things we give veterans is a tombstone. Well, now they're going to look at cutting that. Um, and you're going to see them try to raise revenue like it's going out of style. Mm -hmm. That's what's behind the online gaming. 
you know. Okay. That's what's behind Sunday sales. Yeah, you I know, saw that, yeah. Yeah, Sunday uh -huh. sales is back again. It's been back so many times. But this year it's Sunday sales with a twist because it has uh -huh. nothing to do with Sunday sales. And I say that because it's a... Now, we say Sunday sales. Right. This is the blue laws? The blue laws. Mm -hmm. Sunday yeah. sales of selling alcohol on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. This one's tricky because... This is apparently um, a, a big problem for many <laughs> uh, your constituents. Yeah. Well, you know, most of the people who had, had come out in the previous session let me know uh -huh. they wanted... Sunday sales to happen and be able to buy liquor on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We're sponsored by the grocery store industry. They were, okay. I were giving little postcards from Stop and Shop and a couple of the other grocery stores yeah. in the area. See, the bottom line is with Sunday sales is in Connecticut we choose to manage our, our liquor mm -hmm. in, in, in a certain way like every state does. Right. We have about 1,300 package stores and the way it's set is you could have one liquor permit per 2,500 people in a town. So that yeah. gives you know a, a fair distribution of liquor permits across the, uh, mm -hmm. across the state. Well, with Sunday sales, what could actually happen is we could lose about 200 of those package stores. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what the numbers we're getting. The revenue numbers with just Sunday sales alone right. don't match up. We'll probably lose business. But this has nothing to do with Sunday sales this year. So it won't be a net gain to the Treasury? It won't. Yet? It won't, and huh. it, even with the other numbers that they're, they're saying, uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't buy them because it's the same people who came up with the numbers for the governor's budget, right. with it, where we're going to get the savings from the healthier workforce, which hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. We were going to get 180 million dollars from the employee suggestion box, which hasn't happened. Right. You know, those savings are part of the reason we're we're facing a deficit again. Yeah. But what what I want to make sure I get across to everybody is when you hear Sunday sales, it's more than that. It's about eliminating state minimum pricing. It's about coming up with a medallion system to sell liquor permits, similar to what they do with New York cabs. So these are wide-ranging changes which the state can draw more money out of and will eventually change our management of alcohol in the state. The small mom-and-pop uh, liquor store is going to go out of business. It ain't going to happen. They're okay. not going to make it. We're, we're eventually going to transition to either large box stores or the grocery stores are going to have more beer and wine. Huh. That's just the, the math of it. Right, There's right, no right. way those 13, uh, 1,300 stores can survive. Hmm. Um, Jim, let me, let me bring it in. Has, has Connecticut just gone so far uh, to, the, to the sort of liberal end of the spectrum that basically the Democrats can do whatever they want and, and us uh, uh, Republicans are out kind of just whistling into the wind and, and we really don't have any say. Is there a two-party system left over? Is it just Dan Carter and three friends up there trying to hold <laughs> Dan Carter and, and the gang. Yeah. It's, um, well, in the sometimes. 2010 midterm elections, you'd have to say yes. You yeah. know, there was this you know, kind of revolt across the country. And, you know, it just kind of fizzled out here. It didn't happen here, so you'd, so you'd have to say yes. Um, but the problem is, you know, as the state with the highest per capita debt in the union, which is, which is incredible for a small state like us, uh. um, the, the drop in the bond rating now makes it more expensive to borrow, and it just exacerbates the situation. And, and you know, Dan's right about uh, the size of the workforce. And we've, mm. we've talked on the show about uh, the distinction between union workers, private, sector, private yeah. sector union workers and public sector union workers, mm -hmm. and how that system is corrupted. Because, you know, you're not negotiating, you're not collectively bargaining fairly with an individual. You're putting money in the coffers of a politician uh, who you get elected and then sits across the table from you. Right. And there's, you know, the pie is not, uh, is not assets of a company. The pie is the taxpayer's pocket. Yeah. And it seems to be just an endless, uh, you know, an endless trough. So, uh, you know, on all those points, um, there's, there's not a lot of hope on, on, the, on the horizon uh, with the current administration. I mean, they have a view. They're going to take care of the, they believe in that ideologically, I guess, that the, uh, the state workforce should be what it is. And we did hear all those horror stories about, you know, driving off a cliff and who's going to get laid off. And so far, the only layoffs are the eight involuntary layoffs from the uh, food stamp scandal, I guess. So right. Eight. All the, I think that's what they A grand are. total of eight. So far, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it's... Uh, um, Larry, we yes. want to get your perspective on this. Thanks, Mark. You're hemming and hawing a bit. Right over me. I'm sorry, we'll get, we'll get right okay. back to you. I'm but uh, uh, what, we want to get your perspective on this. What is he saying that isn't right? Are you well-versed well in the state government? And what, not so much in the state, Marty. Right. But first, thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, opine again. Yeah. Uh, a couple of points I did want to make about the video that you showed about the deficit as well as um, your, your, your discussion. Yes. First about the video, and you know, it's a common discourse when it comes to deficit spending. You can't really view a government the same as you view an individual. For example, the person in the video talks about, well, I got to get the new car, I've been down to Australia. Those are obviously tremendous expenses and they're... Frivolous. Uh, 
Not necessary. Yeah, I would okay, say. Okay, I would okay. say not. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say uh, frivolous. But what what I would say, you know, when you look at say, if you thought the United States, it was appropriate for the United States to go into Iraq, yeah. you can't you can't send people and, and not pay them. You can't give them no equipment. You can't give them uh, you know guns and weapons and things. Yeah. You have to pay them. So that's you know that's a difference. You can't just cut back on say the the military because you're in a recessionary time. Well, solely because of that. And that's, that's, that, that's, okay. it, it, now he's having an arc. But that's, you know, that's a couple of differences. But we should concentrate on, on a little bit on what we agreed upon. First, congratulations to the Navy SEALs. Uh, Absolutely. They do, a, you know, an outstanding job. It takes a tremendous amount of physical ability as well as a tremendous amount of courage to do what they do. Uh, and my dad drove a 69 Purple. Buick LeSabre, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was rather, it's rather ugly. As, well, as, if it was back in the 60s, that's the last time we've had a uh, housing market as bad as it is right now. Uh, okay, but what I want, you know, but what I wanted to do, I don't, I didn't necessarily want to get into the, uh, you well, know, okay, to the housing talk market. Talk a little bit what Dan's talking about on the local political yeah. scene here in Connecticut. Okay. Um, does it does it cause you pause? I mean, you're in the financial world. Right. When someone downgrades your bonds, it's not a good thing. It's not a good sign. No, it's not when a good as, sign. When, as uh, as um, Jim said, that we're the highest per capita state in, in indebtedness, that's a problem. And you have one party that's controlling virtually all the state government. Now, is there any part of that, as a clear-thinking American patriot, that gives you a problem? Uh, well. In regards uh, to Denise Napier, who is the state treasurer, uh -huh. her, her performance has been relatively poor. So, you know, she's probably someone who, you know, who might be replaced. But at, that's one part. The second point, no, I'm saying that's a point of agreement. Uh, the second point, when you say that Connecticut has the highest per capita, you know, per individual yeah. uh, deficit in its, in its state spending, and that would be surprising, it wouldn't surprise me that it would necessarily be a small state. There are certain, you know, expenses associated with any government that, you know, are going to exist. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of a legislator, legislature, uh -huh. the... Uh, not, I know you don't get paid big money, Dan. I know you, you told me that <laughs> on, on, the last, on, on the last on the last time I was on the show. Right but you're distributing yeah. it over a smaller base of people. Right. So that wouldn't that doesn't necessarily uh, surprise me. Uh, you know, clearly. So the debt doesn't have to be paid, paid back. Uh, I mean, if we have the largest debt per capita. No, I, I, mean, I don't. That's not significant. I don't. No, I don't think I said that debt doesn't have to be paid back. Well, you said it's not not no, that big a deal. That's not what I said, Dave. I said it didn't surprise me, is what I said. Um, no, you know, eventually, well, well, the thing with, by the way, with, with debt being paid back, you know, with, with, uh, with governments, does it necessarily all have to be paid back? What are we, what, we're 15 trillion, go to the federal level now. You know, more or less. I think it just 16. got bumped up to 60. Was it 60? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we just had, well, this was a microcosm of what happened on the federal level where, you know, they went in and they said they cut $320 out of Yeah, 380. Yeah, the, I know. Well, you know, is, when the which president. Which is comparable to I, what Yeah, I get it, Marty. I, I got it, Marty. But did you Thank get you. the part where they had the kids sign off? Yeah, on yeah. The I, 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 I kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does yeah, that I, cause you I, I kind of got either? it. Look, Marty. You, okay. Welcome, the, Al. Call you there. Keep calling. Oh, keep no, calling. no, I was going to say, you made some points not? about the president not okay, growing on. the sources of revenue. He went, he went after, he made it a point to go after the oil companies in the, in the State of the Union address, you know, essentially getting Do free. Keep talking, go ahead. Essentially getting free uh, leases on their property, which was designed get... when oil was at $35 a barrel to get them to drill. They were given specific subsidies. Right. Now with oil pretty much at triple digits, more or less, right. then it, it's really it's really not a necessary subsidy, and you know, and, and and he's right about that. You know, that's one thing. The second thing, people talk about how left wing President Obama is. I saw a tape recently of President Reagan uh -huh. saying, you know, millionaires have to pay taxes. So that's not just a democratic thing. That's also. Uh, well, I, I, think, I think the problem, the problem with Obama and the difference is I, I don't think anybody out there says we don't have to pay taxes. Everybody has to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Obama is, is, for better or worse, orchestrating a, a culture and a movement against people who are wealthy. 
the oil companies, the rich people. They're, they're basically hanging out the rich people saying, hey, listen, that's the guy to blame, and that's the guy we're going to take the money from. And, and it's, it's creating this class warfare. I ran into a guy in a, in a medical office the other day, and um, you know, normal kid, and he starts talking about how, how horrible rich people are. And, and I look at that and I say, that, that is the most un-American, despicable kind of behavior. I just don't agree with that. It's against everything I stand for. It's not personal. Yeah, I understand. And we're talking about that. Listen, Obama did an amazing job in the State of the Union. It was a great address. He did a great job for a man who is trying to get reelected and hasn't done anything to get there, like with policy. You know, there's a lot of half-truths. There's a lot of taking credit for things. He, he painted a beautiful picture of sunshine for all of us. Happy days are here again. Mm -hmm. If I were his handler, he did a great job. I, I don't think that's what the president said at all. <laughs> a couple of things about uh, truths and half-truths. You know, I think it was really the first time, at least that I can recall, that the president took credit for some of the accomplishments that he had um, uh, that he had done. He didn't Getting, get credit for health care. He, he stayed away from it. Well, I, I think that's true. He stayed away from health care. That's very true, Jim. And, and I think the, yeah. uh, and, and I, I do want to talk a little bit about that, but I think the reason for that, you know, is that anytime he says anything about it, you know, he gets completely drowned out by this overwrought um, other side of the aisle. I, I mean, I don't know if you saw it, Marty, but Jan Brewer, the uh, GOP governor of Arizona, yeah, we pointed at him on the tarmac. She did more than point. She sold a lot of Good books. Good for her. <laughs> Good for her, Dave? Absolutely. No, no, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Dave, let me I tell you something. If Elliot Spitzer went after George W. Bush during the, in, you know, when he was a first-term governor. They made movies uh, they, showing assassinations of George Bush. They is, made movies about it. Well, they is Hollywood, wait, 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 Dave, are, are Hollywood, are they elected members? Of, of states, are they members of government? This is a governor Every. of one of the United States of America going on the tarmac and just literally screaming at the president. People talk about respect no, no. for the president, for hear the office. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in what she said. I'm not. I heard what she said. No one knew. Did you hear what she, I know what she okay, said. Then you're, she didn't you're like the book. No, points. that she didn't. That's all you're he doing. didn't like you're the book. No, she points. said. Oh, I guess he didn't like my book. No, that's what she said. Well, you don't. First of all, you and I don't know what he said and what she said. I, mean, I know what I listened to her on the radio say what he said and what she said, and she didn't convey at all that she yelled at him. Well, she, they don't have audio tape. We don't know. I mean, you know, pick up the New York Times and get your talking points. We don't know what was what was said there. We just don't know. All right, hold that point. Hold that point. You're on. You're on. The dastardly Republicans are responsible for everything, and they're rude to boot. I'm with you. Hold well, that point. Okay, and uh, it's got to be Al Robinson. Yeah, Al Robinson is joining us. Al, where are we going wrong here? One no question you have for Dan Carter. Yeah, I have a question for Dan Carter, actually. Please. Uh, yeah, uh, back to the Sunday liquor sales. Um, as somebody who has seen the effects of, um, let's just say, uh, stores being closed on Sunday to, to ban alcohol. As you're quite aware, if you go over the border, the bridge of New York, it's a place called On the Border. And if you go over there, let's say, next Sunday, which is Super Bowl Sunday, it will be packed with people with Connecticut license plates buying beer, buying liquor constantly. Um, same thing happens over in Ridgefield, right over the border of Ridgefield. It's a pack of stores all lined up with customers from Connecticut knowing they're constantly buying beer in other states. All that revenue that we've had in these board communities are going all over to New York on Sundays. Um, this is a blue law that we're talking about here. There's only two other states that have this type of blue law. Um, and we don't hear any problems with package stores in all the other 48 states of the union, or 47 states that have package stores. We don't hear, we don't hear these problems. And moreover, um, even in New York, when you go to New York on Sundays, there's package stores still opening up there in that area, and they sell alcohol not only in package stores, they sell them in a gas station as well as uh, supermarkets. All right. And my question to Dave Carter is, is that um, are you, why are you against, as, a, as a, a representative of a border community where a majority of the people told time and time again wants to get rid of this blue law, okay. why yeah, are you against 
Let me, let me answer this. Okay. okay. By the way, thanks for calling. Uh, Hat City Blog, Hat City Blog. Check out uh, Al Robinson. Uh, thanks for calling, Al. At Hat City Blog. Okay. Yeah, you can um, hold the line if you want. Go ahead. Actually, that, that, Al, Al really was great with his questions because yeah. those are all the big questions that come up. First off, border towns. Um, yes, we live in a border town, but if you look at the revenue generated uh, for having Sunday sales, right. uh, the only argument for increased revenue in Connecticut are the border towns. Remember, there are, I mean, we only have a couple of borders. We're all three borders, really. Right. So it's not going to be that much revenue. And of course, they were talking $8 million possibly. So let me just consider, you're against uh, I, you know what, lifting I, the ban on um, Sunday Sunday. I, I have America. been up to this point, but okay. we'll see. This is a whole new ballgame. This is a comprehensive alcohol reform. Okay. See, what he brought was the second point. What, what happens with package stores in 47 of the states? Well, mm -hmm. every state does it differently. You know, uh, Ohio sells beer and wine in the grocery stores, and they have state stores which sell the liquor. So every store chooses to manage alcohol a little bit differently, and they are blue laws, there's no question about it. Right. Now, the, the question comes up about um, the majority of people wanting this. Uh, there are a lot of people who do want this out there and a lot of people who don't. The majority of the package stores obviously don't. Mm -hmm. Looking at Sunday sales alone, it's what it's going to do is going to take their weekend sales, okay, which are Friday, Saturday, because it's spread them over three days, mm -hmm. increase in overhead. And also in, gives the grocery stores a chance to pick up a market share of beer. Hard for the package door. You now that might be okay in a free market. Like I'm a free market guy. Mm -hmm. But those are some of the issues that we're looking at. And, and here we're, we just what, paid uh, what, $500 million of bonding money for small business packages, right? Now we're going to turn around and put 1,300 small businesses out. Right. So these are, the, these are the questions that we're wrestling with, and I really understand where Al's coming from because yeah. the convenience factor, the freedom factor on a right. border town is important. Okay, Carl, you're on there. You have a question for Dan Carter? Yeah, it's about the Sunday blue laws. I remember back in 63 when they uh, did away with the Sunday blue laws. I remember when all the stores were closed and there was only a few little variety stores for people that took off uh, Fridays. And... Uh, Back then, it was, uh, incomes were low, but there was usually one family income, and everybody got along fine. As soon as they changed the blue laws, and they allowed all the stores to open, over the years, it just got worse and worse. I, I remember uh, back then, used to have segments in the News Times, uh, not the News Times, the Daily News, about the future. And they used to say that the future would be down to three-day work weeks. Now the yeah, that, that didn't work out. And they were supposed to have flying cars by now, too. Yeah, I know. And so are you in favor of, the, of uh, uh, liquor sales on Sunday, or are you against it? Well, yeah, because it, it's, it's, it's just proven itself not to work. Okay. All right. Thanks. Your response to that? Uh, well, I think. I mean, I think he brings up a good point. Um, will Will Sunday sales work? Mm -hmm. I mean, will um, There's obviously a lot of people who want the freedom to be able to go out on a Sunday and and buy liquor. Right. Anybody that I've spoken to and have explained now what I know from being a legislator, most people it causes pause and they go, "Wow, I don't know if we really want businesses going to business." Yeah. Not to mention the fact. If this is a comprehensive change in the liquor laws, right. we could actually have it more difficult to find access to stuff on Sundays. You might find yourself having to drive further away uh -huh. to go to a bigger store if all these mom and pops go out of business. Got a quick question. Dave, they can't, you can't go hunting on Sunday, can you? No, not yet. And you can't not buy, you, so yeah. we need a state where you can buy booze and go out hunting <laughs> on Sunday. I think it'll be a step forward. I'm not quite sure about that, but it is kind so, of so an interesting question. nexus yeah. of yeah. firearms and alcohol. Guns in the class, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guns in the classroom, too. What could money. possibly they, they go wrong there? They do it in Texas, Doug. Yeah. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Worked real well with Dick Cheney, by the way. Yeah. So, so here, here's Ouch. my question. The, uh, I got this, it, I got it. This Sorry. past week, and, and maybe Larry can help me on this one, the last major corporation in America eliminated their pension program. Uh, I, I forget which corporation. Kimberly Is that Carr, Kodak or something we're talking about? You know, no, like, Kodak yeah. on PK. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, the last major corporation eliminated their pension program. There's not even a hint of that in Connecticut with these state unions. Know. Nobody even talks about eliminating pension programs. Well, those things should be just eliminated. You're, you're, you're right. I mean, people have talked about it. The question is, will it get anywhere? And as you know, this is a short session coming up. A short session means <coughs> that legislators can only put in legislation that deals with the budget. Now, I do happen to know my colleague and friend, Senator Mike McLaughlin, did put forth legislation uh, in front of the committee this time mm -hmm. to look at the possibility of basically freezing pensions mm -hmm. where they are now, and anybody who comes in subsequently gets a 401. Now the question is, what is going to happen with that? 
probably nothing. A Democrat-controlled legislature, Democratic-controlled governor. Mm -hmm. Tell Senate. us what, what we can do to help promote that because that we don't have an option. This whole system yeah. will implode on itself. It'll, sure. We're going to self-destruct. Just a, if we do something like that, a, it would be quite profound. We a little profound tidbit, change. a data point. In yeah. the town of Ridgefield alone, this is what the Board of Ed is dealing with, just a small, I mean, 23,000 people in this town, 100, $110,000 overall budget, including Board of Ed. I mean, we're not talking a massive bureaucracy here. All of a sudden, when you start adding up the obligations to the teachers' health care, not their pension, just their health care, yeah. it's a $21.7 million obligation and growing going forward. That hasn't been a, a, a accounted for within the budget up until now. They have this new OPEP that we have to begin okay. to account for that. Right. But I mean, that's just a huge obligation with these with these um, uh, basically government unions, and and it's just I mean, when you talk about the debt obligations that we're putting on our kids, it's just going to kill them. I mean, it's really it's, 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 it's unsustainable. Just, let let alone looking <laughs> California and on the federal level. You, you know, Marty, if, if I may, Dave. Um, oh, go ahead. Okay. Please. You look at what's going on in Wisconsin now, and clearly this is something that uh, Scott Walker, the, the uh, newly elected governor, uh, yes. you know, tried to take on there. And I, I think a, the, the people there, admittedly, Wisconsin's a, a relatively liberal state, yeah. uh, they wanted to, you know, they're, they're trying to oust him. You know, there's right. a petition to recall him and to, yeah. you know, to have a new election. And his primary centerpiece was going forth with you know, just eliminating the union contracts. Here's my stance on this, and I mentioned this the first time I was on the show, yes. is that he really didn't take any tact as any tact as far as negotiating with the unions. He just <laughs> said, you're out with um, uh, collective bargaining. Kasich tried it in Ohio. People hate him there. He's, I mean, <laughs> you know. He, Didn't uh, Mitch recently, Daniels do it in Indiana and work pretty good? Well, Mitch Daniels, well, it was just in Indiana. They're making that right to work. Right to work. Right to work. Right. No, but Is I, that so bad? Well, you know, I 40 think. 40% of the jobs, 40, 40 goes of the jobs created in the United States yeah. have been created in Texas. Last time I checked, that was a right to work state. Is that so Marty, bad? Well, just keep in mind, nobody in Connecticut is talking about getting rid of collective bargaining right now. Okay. So no, no. That was only, we'll keep compare apples and apples. What we're trying to do is reduce the size of the pensions, okay. what we give away. All right. right. Uh, All right. Well, well, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Making that yeah. distinction between public and private, and so what you saw is yeah. this influx of outside <coughs> unions. You saw the AFL, CIO. You saw, you know, uh, steel workers, teamsters. What you saw you, people in, but no, but you saw people, teachers no, bringing. No, but it's people in Wisconsin who are signing the petition to recall them. For the yeah. recall, but I mean, the, but the, the the protest effort during the legislative session, it was outside or inside, but they had private sector unions there. He wasn't doing right. anything well, well, private well, sector well, let's, unions. Let's not forget a bad job of articulating that split, mm -hmm. and so did Kasich. Well, we can't forget the power of the unions to organize. I mean, that's what they right. do. They organize well. Yeah. They get the public organized. Yeah. Uh, you know, the public really doesn't, I don't think, really understand the implication. I mean, look in Connecticut. We're becoming a more union state with the unionization of daycare workers through the governor's executive order, mm -hmm. which, you know, obviously is going to be a, a sore subject this it's huge. session. I mean, you know, just daycare yeah. workers to take care of uh, aging relatives or something well, like that. Well, and think yeah. about it. In, in, in the president's speech last night, he added two more government entities, the Financial Crimes Unit yeah. and yes. the Trade Enforcement Unit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. now think about this. We've got the TSA, we've got ICE, we've got ATF, we've got FBI, CIA, Homeland Security, NSA, we've got Financial Crimes Unit and Trade Enforcement Unit, all of which are going to have pension funds, which just pile on debt. Year after and not year after a year. one of them could figure out what the heck Bernie Madoff was doing for uh, you know. Well, years. the SEC finds fraud you when know, they read but about it in the all paper. Collecting but their Marty, pensions. a couple of things. What about the president's uh, desire to merge the SBA with you know some other you, you know bureaus uh -huh. and and to cut them out. And SBA, the small, small business, business administration. I think those and do some other work, no, with with you know the office with the office of financial responsibility and a couple of others. So mm -hmm. he's maybe you would consider that to be the three hundred eighty dollars. Well, I would, I would consider not, it to be this way. I'll give you a golf analogy. You know, you know John Daly, the golfer, a no, rather Marty, heavy heard set, him. hefty guy. <laughs> yeah, John Daly set, on his golf swing. shirt had simultaneously mm -hmm. the diet company Trim Fast along with a logo for Dunkin' Donuts on the same shirt. Yeah. And to have Barack Obama be the one that's going to put everyone on a trim fast diet when he's been gorging on donuts for as long as he's been there, I just don't think he's the guy for the job you know, to trim down the federal government.
Well, so I, I don't, well, I don't if, if I may, again, I'm sorry. When another thing I said on the show, I think it was the second time I was on, Barack Obama ran, yeah. and he said, "Look, the economy is dying. We're going to have, you know, stimulative packages. Right. Put aside for the moment if you think that was the right thing or the wrong thing. That's what he said he would do." That, I know. Uh, okay. So he was given a situation that was, you know, extremely difficult. Same thing as the and, governor in Wisconsin, but go and ahead. And he was given... Go ahead, go ahead. You're saying he's just doing what he said he was going to yeah, do? Yeah, governor Wisconsin so said upset. he was going to do away with collective bargaining. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He now when he was did. No, he did. no, he didn't. God, when was. he was running. No, he didn't, Dave. That, That's why... Okay. No, he didn't. No, we didn't. I'll All right, hold that thought. Hold I'm, that thought, because we want to. We want a good. A couple. We're going to get into the lightning round. Yeah, here. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Do you have one final uh, thought on that? Finish your point. I'm not sure yeah. he had no, a point. No, no, no I do. No, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish no, up. Well, wrap well, it up. Land this plane, well, baby. Well, Land this plane. Go ahead. No, I was. I was just. No, what? I was just. No, I, Marty. I was just making the point about the. You know about the unions that. Yeah, they they have to be negotiate. They have to be negotiations with them. I'd also like to see, you know, the uh, oil companies give up some of their rights associated with the leases. I'm Luke, the president mentioned I think, last yeah, I think the oil night. So it's not, been, you know, and I you think your point like that you, you were making was that this is what Barack Obama ran on. Well, that's right. No, I know that. In the dire economy, we and need to no, but there was a reason. For, no, but your point it. was that he wouldn't go go forward, change his spending habits. And exactly. I'm saying the reason why his spending habits like was John strong, Daly with the trim uh, pass, uh, trim. Uh, well, he, well, that's. A bad example if you think, I think about it's a perfect he got, example. He got bariatric surgery money. So John Daly and uh, John Daly gave him drinking. John and that Daly gave brings him us smoking. back to debt ceiling, which is a, a fiscal bariatric <laughs> surgery. All right, yes. we're going far yes. afield. Let's go through a couple <laughs> things because uh, we, we're, we're on the lightning round now. Yeah. Okay. We talked about the bond rating. It does seem like you're spending too much, and now you're going to look for other revenues. Hint, hint. Code for taxes. So look out. Anything's going to get rich. What about redistricting? Now this is some inside okay. baseball so, sort of stuff, but that's what you're going to be talking about. What's okay. going on with redistricting, and why should we care about it in okay. the state of Connecticut? Uh, in the state of Connecticut, well, well, first off, the House and Senate districts were redistricted already. Okay. Uh, that was there's basically a bipartisan committee that meets equal number of people, which is unique to Connecticut. So one party doesn't have an advantage. The two parties get together and they help come up with an agreement. If they don't have an agreement, it goes to the court. Okay. So they were able to agree on House districts and Senate districts. Okay. There were some changes all over. Um, the district that I represent, the second district, actually changed a little bit. Gain? Um, Gain? I lost, actually, I lost a little bit of number. Okay. Um, I'm right at the target number. I'm six, they, they come up with a target number of population is what they do. What is it? That makes that's uh, 23,700 and wow. okay. something around the ballpark. Right. Um, I'm actually the, the second district will be six people short, okay. which is great because it's right on that number. Right. And what that does is it's a kind of an equal vote per district. Okay. And mm -hmm. what they did in, in this case is they um, they took out a little bit of Danbury from the district, added a little bit more Bethel and part of Newtown, uh -huh. which is a a big change. It'll now be a four town district, which which kind of uh, changes the element. Okay. But across the, uh, the, the state, the House districts are in place, the Senate districts are in place. Uh, the last that they worked on was the congressional districts. Right, which, so the fourth and fifth of the right. biggies, where does Bridgeport, where is Bridgeport <laughs> now, and where does it end well, up, it's, and what does that it's, mean? It's not all finished yet, but the, the most important thing is, is when the, when the court, Supreme Court took this on, mm -hmm. they appointed a special master. The special master court um, had marching orders to not change hardly anything, just change okay. the population. Mm -hmm. So leave the borders as close to possible, uh, or close to what they were as possible. And I think from what I'm hearing, the recommendation is to do that. Uh, right now, the districts look pretty much the same. There are some okay. changes up in the fifth. I think the Bridgeport is going to stay in the fourth. I don't see Danbury going into the fourth. Okay. Um, you know, this was gerrymandered a long time ago, and I think it's going to stay pretty similar. Okay, now, let's yeah. talk a little bit. Uh, Jim Himes is in the... Fourth, fourth district, He's okay, right, yeah. and uh, and who do you see running against him, and do they have a chance? Uh, <laughs> and then in uh, in the fifth district, and also give me yeah. a word on. I don't want to, you know say who I think would be good, but give me a word on uh, how you see the Senate campaign unfolding. Come on, give us the insight. Okay, well, well I, I don't have as much on the 4th District, obviously. I uh, I spend a lot more time in the 5th District, because right. it's the majority of the district. Um, you know, the, Right now, there are a couple of the same players who were in last time. Right. Uh, Justin Bernier is in the race. Uh, um, uh, Lisa Wilson Foley is in the race now, right, right, which um, right. sounds like she's raising you know a lot of money. Uh, Andrew Rohrbeck, senator from up in Torrington, came into the race. Okay. Um, 
those those sound like the the front runners from what I'm hearing right now right. in the fifth um, on the Republican side. Of course, on the Democratic side, uh, Chris Donovan, the Speaker of the House, is is heir apparent from what I understand. Okay. So we'll just have to wait and see how that shapes up. In the Senate race, obviously. The Senate race, yeah. yeah. By the way, yeah. I don't know if you get a shot of this. <laughs> Chris Shays will be joining us in about three weeks. Not that we're partisan yeah. here, not that we have a dog in the fight, because Linda McMahon is pretty good. If you ever go on yeah. YouTube, she's got a pretty wicked kick. Check it out. <laughs> uh, but Chris Shays, uh, he just looks like a senator. I think we go with him, but go ahead. Okay, um, well, obviously, uh, on the Republican side, Linda McMahon, Chris Shays are the front runners. Uh -huh. um, Brian Hill, I believe yeah. is the name. Brian Hill's in the race. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know how he's done with raising money uh, right. so far. And then, of course, on the, the Democrat side. I hear Linda it's... McMahon has a few shekels to rub together, and she's doing well, pretty good. She's doing really well. Um, what's different this time, I think, is the fact that she's raising more money this time. It's okay. not like she's coming out and just. <laughs> she's not writing checks. I think she's so, right. Well, well, she's, 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 yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's just not coming out saying, I'm going to pay out my own money. Right. Yeah. By the way, we she's just had an uh, operative yeah. from the Linda McMahon campaign calling in. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you have a question for uh, the candidate, or do you want to say a word in favor of Linda McMahon? Well, for, uh, for Linda McMahon, uh, wrestling is great. Um, so, I, I have a real quick question for Dan Carter. Um, yes. Dan, one more time, just, just out loud for calling out, so you can. Um, you brought a really important topic. I don't think a lot of people really understand this. The whole redistricting thing in terms of representatives. Now, you, uh, you used to represent Bessel and Dan Barry. Now you represent Newtown. As somebody who lived many years in Newtown in the Sandy Hook area, which I don't think is going to be covered. Um, I don't think that's your area, but Newtown is very different from Bessel. It's very different from Dan Barry. Have you met with the first selectmen up there in Newtown? Have you met with people in Newtown? Do you, uh, you have a grasp of some of the concerns of those constituents up there? And if so, you know, how are you going to apply that up there at the state capitol? Thanks a lot. Good question. Thanks, Al. Those are those are actually great questions because that's a that's a concern. Um, well, obviously, I, I right now I represent uh, part of Danbury, Bethel, mm -hmm. and the northern third of Reading, actually. Okay. And I'm keeping mm -hmm. and I'm keeping all those towns. We'll, we'll stay in the second district now. Should I be elected? That's when I'll represent part of Newtown. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an interesting uh, question. Like, what have I done so far to get in? You know, the knowledge. Right. I don't represent Newtown yet. I'm not their elected official. However. Um, because I'm looking to go there and because the second district will be there, I'm, I'm paying very close attention. Mm. Uh, I have met with the first selectman there were that, uh, that was right away. Uh, I was included in one of our legislative meetings with the other representatives. Mm -hmm. um, I had an opportunity to be included in their legislative forum, which uh, they were, they were, uh, basically their commission puts on. Right. And um, that was you know, eye-opening. So I'm having a chance to learn a lot about those those issues. Do you have an opponent right, running against you this time? Um, not yet, but I'm sure there'll be somebody coming out of the woodwork. That's I, I just haven't heard who yet. Okay. I'm um, thinking about tossing the hat in. Okay, come on. <laughs> I think that would, that would be good. That would be, uh, I, I, I yeah, think... I you want to announce it right here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, final minutes. We, we, we love this uh, uh, Republican primary that's unfolding. I know yeah. this isn't in your belly work. You know, you're doing uh, Sunday sales and stuff like that, and, and and things like that. But I want to get everyone's in, input on this. What do we think of Newt? What do we think of Romney? Does Santorum have a chance? Why is everyone overlooking Ron Paul? I, I know some. Not everyone is. is. Yeah. Really smart people are. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. But um, uh, why don't you tee this up for us, Jim? What's going on? Is this good for the party? Is it bad for the party? Forty-three million dollars Romney made. Ah, that's pretty good. Well. Um, yes, yeah, not bad. I think it's not a bad year. <laughs> well, if you look back to, to 2000, 2008, you know there was some tough infighting on the Republican side between Romney, McCain, and Huckabee. But also on the Democratic side, everyone thinks I guess Barack Obama was the only person in the race, and he was uh -huh. kind of guided through. There was some tough. The Clinton the camp Clinton. and Obama, you know, it got vicious. They South Carolina rivals, right? and Bill Clinton said, "Oh, they they played the race card on me." So yeah, oh, so Jesse Jackson wants this to win this right. too. It ain't no big thing. Right. So <laughs> so whether it's infighting now is damaging, it, it doesn't look like it's any different from times past. But it, it's a bit different in. There's so much exposure. The super PACs are out there yeah. being a little extra vicious. All these debates, you know, there's a debate tonight. It, it, it's just, you know, it, it's a bit much, I think. Yeah. I think it'll calm down a bit after Florida because then there's a gap. By the and, way, and Romney, where we're coming out of stuff. South Carolina, Newt was way ahead of Romney. That is switched, and Romney is now leading um, on all the polls in Florida. Florida yeah, yeah, in yeah. Florida. So, so. so I, don't, I, mean, I, I used to, I, on Twitter, every time these up and downs come, I just kind of put it in, I said, 
I'll say, sorry, Dave. I'll say, you know, it's Romney. It's always been Romney, and I think that's how it's going to it's going to turn out. You know, uh -huh. all the ups and downs. The media loves it. They need jobs, you know, and they're playing the they're playing the horse race. But you know, Mitt has a lot of money. Whatever happens in Florida, you go to uh, Super Tuesday. Half the states are northern states, and you get to um, April, the Connecticut primary, and you have I think you have New York, Pennsylvania, um, Connecticut. Uh, Delaware, four or five northern states. They're yeah. not, not, Newt Gingrich isn't going to win those states. Yeah, yeah. You know, Marty, it's I want to talk, I wanna talk okay. about Newt Gingrich. And Please. One of the things that great I did American, a little isn't he? No. no. One of the things I did some research <laughs> on about him. I, no, I did some research. Okay. He keeps bringing up when he talks about Barack Obama as the radical uh, organization of Saul Alinsky and how Saul Alinsky oh, yeah. was. I I'd never heard of Saul Linsky until the 2000. The weatherman, he hangs out with those guys that bombed the Pentagon. Yeah, oh, the whole man. thing. Have you have you actually done research on Saul Linsky? Because I have. No, please Saul Linsky, me. okay, Saul Linsky, by the way, he died in 1972. So yeah. Obama was 11 when he died. So it's not like he had any personal impact from the man. So, I'm uh, sure I'm not done. Marx died in 18-something. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for no, that. I'm talking about, no, no, but you're missing the point. Okay. Right. Go ahead. We're with I, you. you, you know, <laughs> Call right in. Okay. That's why you're here. No, but you're missing the point. Okay. It's that people make such a point about this guy's influence on him it wasn't like he personally knew him. That's one thing. That's just one point I want to get across. Yes, he had read his books. What Solinsky was about, he was an individual who um, did not believe in violence. He was not a part of the weatherman. This is what he That's said. Gary he said, Ayers. That was the weatherman. Yeah, Gary, Gary, All right, by the Gary. way, it's Bill Ayers. Yeah. And the second Whatever. thing is... And all, his brother Gary was involved. And too. Gary Go was right involved. ahead. And what Alinsky <laughs> did is he got people... Uh, we're from different ethnicities, yeah. different religious backgrounds, different races to say what unites us is greater than what divides us. And these were economic issues at the time. And he took people who he felt were exploited and tried to give them a voice to allow them to have a, you know, a better life. Yes. Reminds me a little bit of another guy. His name was Jesus. That's who this guy Alinsky reminds me of. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I'm not so saying So before we get into like messianic not, imagery, he was, they have even called Barack Obama the, the anointed He one, was know? not right. a bad guy. And what a guy like Gingrich is, a, is counting on yes. is that since he wrote a book with the term radical in the, in the, on the cover, that he could use this guy and that Obama, I, I don't know, I don't know how much Obama was actually influenced by him, but let's assume some, to make the point that Obama is some sort of way out of left field leftists. And I don't. Know. Just I just a, look at his. Like, I just look at his policies, and I look at his rhetoric. You, go ahead. No, and I was. I was. Gonna, I was just going to say the fact that listen, um, if you are running in a presidential primary and you're trying to appeal to conservative Republicans, what else are you going to say? Don't lie. Well, don't, don't make points you know what? that are no, no, only no, no, irrelevant. No, no. It, it, that what, are what's, what's, irrelevant. A, what's irrelevant? I mean, listen, it has nothing to do, it's not your message. The message is trying to be given to conservative Republicans to get them riled up and vote for him. Yeah, yeah. And because you know what? We have a lot of people out there who are going to be arguing about whether or not he knew Saul Alinsky or whether he knows Soros. I mean, it doesn't matter. If, if you, what's going to happen is this, whoever comes out of this primary, if, if the Republicans are going to have any chance at all, what they're going to have to do is have everybody galvanized behind one candidate. That message will be different then. Yeah. That so what, so, what, so what you're saying is that, in essence, that in order to get the base riled up, he has to come up with some phony issue. But that that's, is, not, that's not exactly. Alinsky's elected. He believes in economic redistribution. He's not a capitalist. Oh, a free market capitalist? He, well, let's be clear about something. What he didn't believe in. He's a 99 percent. What he didn't believe in. Right. What he didn't believe in was exploitation. That's what he didn't believe in. He was well, who not. Does? But you know what? Nobody does. And, and, and Nobody does. I, I don't believe who in exploitation. No. <laughs> I didn't say you. No, I, no, neither does Gingrich. We don't. We don't believe in exploiting people. That's not what conservative values are about. That's. It's. It's so not. Here's, a, the right it's, answer. here's the right answer, Marty. Newt destroyed himself when show. he attacked Mitt Romney on Mitt Romney's tax rate at 13%. Mm -hmm. What I heard... And Bain Capital, too. When well, he came because out because he was able to keep his, his uh, tax rate so low, he was able to give more 
it to charity than he was to the government. Now, you tell me which is a better use of capital, giving it to charity or to the government. I'll tell you what the right answer is. Uh -huh. When you give a dollar to the government, over 30 cents is wasted. When you give a dollar to the charity, charities, virtually nothing is wasted. Yeah. I applaud him for getting his tax rate so low and having that money available. Now, let me tell you what Joe Biden did. Joe Biden paid a higher tax rate. How much did he give to charity? Under $500. Yeah. Great guy. So who's the same? You see that? Yeah, well, you, you, see that? you don't know some like of these charities. Some of these charities, the some of these charities have really high overheads. Uh, All right. Say that again. What was that? Some of these charities have real eye overhead, so it's not so much every dollar okay. you go. So I know, but Larry, it is true. Remember they when they the United Way the was under investigation? The guy gave Chow. No, the guy he gave so seven he, million dollars. He gave a lot of money. Well, let me just tell you this: by by not how much of it was tithing? By fifteen percent. By not giving the money to the government, he didn't have to fund Planned Parenthood for four hundred million dollars a year. He gave it to a group that tries to keep kids alive for crying out loud. I mean, it is true. Basically, Democrats or liberals say, well, the more you give to the government, the more you care about people. And as a matter of fact, it isn't so much my money as it's more you give, other people's That's money. Conservatives, I can tell you, the but research you shouldn't be that they give to Democrats. You oh. really really well, should. Okay. Hey, <laughs> because, hey, yeah, hey, you should. say is. Look, I, I, have, I have a basic uh, construction that I'm trying to, you know, map out here, and I think liberal Democrats are often wrong in their analysis of what people give for donations and yeah. what the benefit of a big government that's yeah. going to try and take care of you from cradle to grave is. I don't think that there is a benefit. As a matter of fact, I, with the best of intentions, I think often liberal Democrats create problems that we're all experiencing. Like the Barney LA Frank, riots example, were where and Lyndon by Johnson's the way, congratulations fault. Congratulations to Barney Frank on his uh, at his marriage. Nuptials. Yes, uh, but nice, uh, nice anti-gay jab uh, you tossed this, in there uh, at the end, uh, Marty. Marty, I want to get no, to. No, a, I'm just saying. Can I just want to make a point. I, I want to make. Help you I want to make. Okay, okay two got, minutes. I want to make. Twenty seconds. Okay, no, I need. Okay, yeah. okay. I want to talk quickly. I want to quickly talk about the pipeline. You have twenty seconds to wrap it up while I hold up this political card. Okay. Dave made reference. All right, twenty seconds. Dave made reference. Okay. Dave made reference to an article in Bloomberg about the pipeline. I had it printed out here. I read it. Based upon what I've read here, I don't know why anyone would build it. I wanted to discuss it on the show tonight. How'd you get but here I really tonight? Have time. How'd you get here tonight? Do you drive a car? What? Yeah. What makes you? Get you <laughs> read the article. Okay. It'll be Tell shit. You what, ride okay. a bicycle basically, here. No, Dave, that's wrong. No, Dave, that. that's false. Dave. Yeah, yeah basically, I'm not surprised that you know something that's going to create jobs and bring natural resources down from read our brothers the in Canada. Article, so Marty. we don't have and to. So, in other words, if you build rail cars, the yeah. jobs would be for rail cars. For Warren no, Buffett. Buffett. God not, bless Warren Buffett. Okay, it's not, we're down to the last minute. 20 seconds, quickly, your thought of the day. Well, the Obama speech when he said quick. that uh, we can no longer make risky bets with customers' deposits, talking about financial institutions. Yes. So only the government can make risky debt bets by spending $300 billion bailing out GGM, a trillion dollar stimulus, $800 million for Solyndra, cash for clunkers. Now you tell me who's being irresponsible. $500 for million for Solyndra. Go ahead, very quickly. Quickly. There's a lot of talk. The election comes down to this. Six states. Florida, Virginia, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Ohio, and Indiana went for Obama. You know, wait, if they flip and they are. And by the way, Newt isn't even on the ballot in uh, Virginia. 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 State race. He's yeah. not even there. No, I'm talking about the general. The one man who is a professional in this game. This is just a rogues gallery, although Jim is a professor. What do we look forward to? Uh, it's going to be a busy session. Uh, pay, it, pay attention to what's happening behind the scenes. It's going to be education, but there's going to be a lot more one on another than that. So. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next week on the Marty Heiser Show. Well done, U.S. <laughs> Navy SEALs. You got them. Two to the head, one to the heart. We'll see you next week. I want week. to show you something. Yeah. <laughs> I